Your mom might be wondering, could the United States really play a role in the final events of this world's closing? In the end times, the Bible speaks of two dominating powers arising to become the closing participants of this earth's chapter. Let me remind you of a few things about the United States. We are the most powerful and influential nation on this earth, so it will become of no surprise to see the truth behind this matter. Stay tuned friends, and if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Enjoy. In Revelation chapter 13 verses 1 through 10, there is an illustration of two beasts presented before us. The question is, what do these beasts represent? Well, if we go to the book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 17, it explains it in clarity. Those great beasts which are four are four kings which arise out of the earth. So these two beasts presented before us in the book of Revelation are two world powers. The question is who these world powers are and what two powers these two beasts represent. The first beast with seven heads represents none other than the Roman papacy. Now pay attention to the remainder of this video, friends, because this is where it gets very eye-opening. The Bible predicted in 1798 that the papacy would undergo a deadly wound. Revelation 13.5 And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. So the papacy was given authority to continue for 42 months. But now 42 months was fulfilled, they would receive a deadly wound. Well guess what? Just as the Bible prophesied, this prophecy was fulfilled in 1798. Napoleon's general by the name of Berthier inflicted this deadly wound upon the Roman papacy in 1798 by taking the Pope captive. Around this time, the Bible continues to further explain that another world power or influence would arise. Revelation 13:11. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. Here are some key facts about the United States that leads us to the conclusion that they fit this description for the second beast. We declared our independence in the year of 1776. We voted the Constitution in the year of 1787, and we established the Bill of Rights in 1791. We later became recognized as a world influence by the year of 1798, which, like I said earlier, was the year the papacy received his deadly wound. So the United States is easily the culprit to fit the description of the second beast. Now, in Revelation 13, it said that this beast had two horns in the representation of a lamb. When it says horns like a lamb, it's a representation of this beast giving off the illusion that it is a young, spiritual, and loving nation. This dragon that it speaks about is none other than the Satan himself. So this beast will appear as a free, non-oppressive nation respecting spiritual liberty, but it will soon follow through the acts of the first beast before it and declare judgment on those who remain steadfast in God's word and refuse to worship a counterfeit day. How can we know this? Revelation 13:12. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So you see, it comes down to worship. America will soon prosecute the people, have them go against God's word and worship this counterfeit day or system or face punishment which is described as imprisonment or death. Because if you're not worshiping God in his day, then it's a counterfeit system, simple as that. Revelation 13:15. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many who would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. It is important to know scripture and to know what is coming in these last days because our very lives depend on it. You might be thinking, there's no way they could force the whole world to worship on a certain day and a certain power. This event will take place because Christ gave us this warning ahead of time. And he gives this warning so that we might believe. John 14:29. And now I have told you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you may believe. History is known to repeat itself, so the United States, as mentioned above, will enforce these laws and act in the same manner as the beast before it, to those who don't abide, which as explained previously, is dead. Are you aware of the Roman Inquisition? Well, in the Middle Ages, the papacy followed through with the same movement taking a hold on religious liberty, forcing people to go against God's word, and to those who didn't comply, were murdered and slain. During this inquisition, millions of Christians were tortured and brutally killed for their faith. Look into it, friends, because they had terrible devices as a means of torturing and putting people to death. To name a few, the first one on our list is the head crusher, where its name describes its method. During this method, victims were placed in the upper cap, as illustrated in the picture above, while the cap slowly turns, smashing the jaws and the teeth popping out of the eyes and compressing the head, which would lead to death. Now next up is the cat's paw. This instrument was attached to a device that would then attach to the torturer's hand which would allow easy, easy movement to rip and tear flesh off and away from the bone on any part of the body. And last but not least, the knee splitter. 
This device was the more popular torture method. When used, this device would split the victim's knees, leaving them unable to walk. Built from two spiked wood blocks, the knee splitter was placed on top of and behind the knee. Two large screws which connected the blocks together would be rotated, causing the two blocks to come to a close and taking out anything that was in between. You might be thinking that I took it a little too far by going into great detail of the torch devices, but we need to know the reality of the situation. We need to know what is soon to come upon those who choose to stand in God's word and keep the commandments demonstrating their love for the Creator. So death will be utilized to those who refuse to worship on Sunday. As described in my previous video on the Mark of the Beast, Sunday worship is what sets the stage for the Mark. And here's a statement from the papacy themselves. This statement is found in a Hartford Weekly Call illustrated in February 22, 1844. The church changes Sabbath to Sunday and all the world bows down and worships upon that day in silent obedience to the mandates of the Catholic Church. That change took place in 321 AD under the rule of emperor by the name of Constantine. It also described for us in Revelation 13.17 that those who didn't have the mark weren't able to buy and sell. Revelation 13.17 And that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. In this picture, this is what's known as a ration stamp. This stamp was distributed in World War II which controlled the purchase of food, gas, tires, and other necessities that we do need to survive. If it could happen then, friends, it could very easily happen today. If you don't think that the papacy could undergo this type of movement, think about how much power she really has. Almost every major country consults their system before making a major move when it comes to policies. When the Pope arrived in the Jubilee of Mercy in the beginning of the year, which took place in January 22nd, they expected 25 million people in attendance. If that doesn't say popularity and admiration, I don't know what does. And if you don't think that the United States could enforce worship upon the nation, really think about it. We have the world's strongest military power. All it would take is an army threatening death and control in the form of martial law and the deed is done. Friends, scripture says in the last days that the devil will incite great miracles and wonders. So convincing and so great that even the very elect will be deceived. All this is done in honor for you to worship the image of the beast. There is only one way we are going to be able to withstand these deceptions. Take a look at 2 Timothy 2.15. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We are in the closing chapters of this earth. The king is coming soon for his bride. Only those who remain in God's word and trust in Christ and follow the law and of love that he has laid down before us will have a right to the tree of life and may enter into the gates of the city. Revelation 22:14 says this, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life, and may enter ran through the gates into the city. That wraps up this video, friends. If you enjoyed, please like the video. And if you made it this far, comment down below and let me know. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. I hope this video helps you realize the seriousness of what is soon to come. God bless, and I will see you guys next time.